Greetings, ladies. Uh, welcome to Lady in Waiting. This is Kathy Washira, and I'm happy to be back again this week to share nuggets of wisdom with you, with you and also just for us to reason together. And I pray that you have been doing well and that the Lord has kept you. And today, very quickly, I just want to go to straight to our topic, uh, how to know that he's wasting your time. And there are just five, five points, five points, how to know that he's wasting your time. And I think some of you might think I'm talking about street stories, but these are not street stories. I'm talking about that brother, or if you're a man, that sister in church, how do you tell he's wasting your time? And I know that all of us, People have wasted our time. There is always that one person who just wasted your time. And sometimes you regret why you couldn't see, you know. So I'm going to just advise you three, five, sorry, not three, but five signs. Number one, he has unlimited access to you, but you don't have the same. In other words, when I mean unlimited access is anytime he wants to reach you, whether by phone, whether by text, or even come to see you physically, you, he is able to get that access. It's not an issue. It's not a big thing. It, it, he doesn't need an application letter. But when it comes to him, it's not the same way. He will tell you, oh, before you come, call me. Before you come, text me. Or before you call, text me. He, there is always a reason why you cannot access him. Or oh, there, there is a formality that has to come before you access him. It is almost like you are having, you are having a... Uh, it, it, it's, it's a formal, I don't know how to uh, explain it, a formal relation, too formal to be normal. In other words, you always feel like you have to make an application before you meet him. And I'm not saying, uh, when I talk about unlimited, doesn't mean that you're free, you have nothing to do, you can come in there. What I'm just saying is that he can access you anytime. You know, is that some out of him saying, I'm, I'm, can I come at two? Or, yeah, come. You know, there's no, there are no formalities. But when it comes to him, you feel like there are formalities. When you see those kind of things, ask yourself why. Why are there formalities? Number two, he treats you like a puppy. I don't know whether you've seen this. Puppy is a small, um, the baby of a dog. Sometimes when they do something nice, they're given a treat to encourage them to do something nice. It's like, yeah, like a good boy, a good girl, you know. And this, this guy treats you like that when he does something wrong or when you confront him. You know, especially most of the time he's about where he's where about. Either he didn't appear in, uh, he said he was supposed to come, he didn't come, he bounced you on a date, or he, he, he there's that something wrong that is done. So to avoid the confrontation, when he comes to see you next, he comes with a treat. The treat can be a flower, it can be money. That flower is not flower. Okay? So he treats you, you feel like you're a puppy. Anytime you want to confront an issue, that you're thrown for a treat. Number three, so before I go to number three, so anytime you feel like that, anytime you feel like a puppy, you know, something is thrown at you, a treat, money, flowers, gift, and it is not, it is not come, it is, you know, on normal days when there is no issue, he would not give you such things, but when there's an issue, that is when he brings it up. Number three, he avoids conversation especially deep conversations, intentional conversations, conversations that have to do with your future because there's nobody who wants to waste time in a relationship that is going nowhere. Especially at when you reach a certain age, you're not there to, to play games. You're not there to waste five years and then you say, ah, this one is not working, let me look for another one. And then you spend the, all, the whole of your life, you know, testing this, testing, nobody wants that. You, you, Everybody, when anyone is entering into a relationship seriously, you're entering there hoping that this relationship is going to be the one that leads to the altar. So anytime you see someone avoiding conversations that are deep, intentional, the ones that have to do with the future, he just wants to talk about himself, stories, you know, some of them even rather talk about the, 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 their brothers or sisters, but they talk about sexual things. When you see the kind of conversation he has, be wise. Number four, you seem to be putting more effort in this relationship than this. I don't know. You you feel like you're the one who is working. You're the one who's always creating the dates. You're the one who's always suggesting things. It's like you're working. You're working so hard. Apart from your, so your eight to five job, you have this other relationship that you're working. It's like him is not making any effort. Let me tell you what the Bible says. The Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing. You know? When a man has found his wife, he will pursue that woman to the altar. He does the work. Because remember, men are born hunters. 
They are born hunters. They, they hunt. They will hunt you to the altar. But when you find yourself, it's like you're the one who is hunting. You're the one who is always trying to make the dates and trying to do this and suggesting this and doing the calling and the texting and the what. Is it? No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. She's probably just wasting your time. And I'm going to explain to you why. And especially if there's a lot of date cancellations. You know, you decide you're going to meet at 4, then shortly before 4 o'clock, it cancels the date. No, something is not right, you know. Number five, you cannot account for where he is and yet he intentionally, and I underline the word intentionally here, wants to know where you are. You, you cannot account of where he is, but he in intentionally wants to know where you are. Do you know why? So that he makes sure that you're not where he is. That is why he wants to know where you are. He wants to make sure that you're in the house before he goes for his... He wants to make sure that you're in the office before he goes. He wants to make sure that you're not in town where he wants to go. He's always, when he wants to follow up, he's not following up because he cares. He wants to really know where you are. No, it's because he wants to make sure that where you're going is not where he's going. Let me tell you something. Anytime you see some five, five of these signs, it simply means that you are a spare wheel. It's not that, he's, it's not that he hates you. He likes you. But there's something, there's a good thing he has found that he's pursuing, but he's not sure. So he has kept you there as a spare wheel so that in case this one, the thing, the good thing that I've seen, because remember men are hunters, the good thing that I've seen, if I don't get it, at least I'll have a substitute. Or oh, you are just there as a substitute. Listen, when you see any of those signs, please help him, help him. Or if it's her, help her to, to, to be free, to pursue what he wants to pursue. Anytime... When a man finds the person that he wants to marry, he will pursue that person. To the, he, will, he will not give you peace. You will know. So anytime you feel like you're, 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 you're struggling, like, you're, you're, like you have to work so hard, like, like you're the one who is game all the time, you, everything, you, you, your books are open. Him is, is very vague. He's very opaque in the relationship. Help yourself early so that we avoid all these heartbreaks. And it's very sad that as much as I'm teaching us all these things, uh, women are very hard to advise. We are very, very hard to advise because we never learn. <laughs> but I pray that you're going to take this and help you. But at the same time, the wearer of the shoe is the one who knows where the shoe is tight. So the decision is yours. But be wise. Be wise. And I pray that in this season, 2023, we are going to make wise decisions as women. God bless you even as you make that decision.